The first method we're going to look at is payback. And essentially it's asking the question, how many years must pass before we get a return on our investment? So we look at the project cost, we divide that by the savings we're going to get each year, and that's going to give us the payback period. Now in textbooks you'll see this as a method, and I would advise you not to use this method, as will become clear in the next few slides. Students who use this method in the exam do not get any marks. So for instance, we've got a project here, it costs us £750,000, and the anticipated savings are £250,000 a year. So you can see where we're going with our payback calculation. But this is the problem with this method. It's quite unlikely that the savings per year are going to be equal at £250,000 in year one, in year two, and in year three. And if we use this method, it's going to show us that the payback is within three years. So that's the £750,000 divided by £250,000. But it's quite unlikely that we're going to get equal savings per year. So please do not use this method. The method you should use is to look at the cash flows over the life of the project. So we start with the start year or a year zero where we make our investment. In this case, we're investing £750,000 and so our bank account is sitting at negative £750,000. And now we can look at a different benefit or income to the project for each year. In my example, the first year, £500,000 worth of profit. So our bank account is going to sit at negative £250,000. Our cumulative is negative £250,000. In the second year, we make an income of £250,000, and so therefore we have broken even. We've got to zero. This project pays back in year two. So using this cash flow technique, we can use different values of profit for each year to get an accurate payback. And this project pays back at year two. It could be that you don't have an exact return to that zero value. So you might need to do some very simple mathematics on calculating, well, when does it pay back? In this example, at year N, we're at negative 20,000 pounds. But the next year, year N plus one, we're at plus 10,000 pounds. So somewhere between year N and N plus one, we pay back. Now this is simple triangular mathematics. And this is saying that actually to get from negative 20 to 10 is a distance of 30, but we only need to get two thirds of the way to zero to pay back. So to get to zero, it's two thirds of the travel through the year. So two thirds of a year is eight months. Now, I'd like to say that all of our figures for uh, income, for profits, are estimates two, three, four years into the future. So actually, there's very little point in calculating the payback to an exact day. Nobody's going to say the project is going to pay back in three years, four months, two weeks, and three days. It would be ridiculous. If I give you a question like this in the exam, um, I would expect you to say the project pays back between years two and three, and then you might like to say that, you know, you've calculated it's two and a half years or it's two and a quarter years. Now, the problem with payback, it's a very simplistic method. It doesn't consider the time value of money. Uh, we'll be looking at that uh, with the net present value method. The time value of money, money in the future is worth less than money now. In the payback method, we're assuming that any income profit we make in year three or year four is treated equally to any profit we make next year. That's not true. Payback can favor the short-term projects. These might not be the best projects, as our examples will show. I've already said companies with financial problems often stipulate that projects must pay back within 12 months. They want to see a quick return on their investments. 
Now, if you work for a company that uses this method, they will tell you what the required payback period is. Depending on their industry or their business, it could be six months, could be 12 months, 18 months. And they'll say, our requirement is that all projects pay back within this period. Now, as students, you have to decide, is that a good payback or a bad payback? So here's a rule of thumb. If the payback is less than half the life of the project, it's probably OK. But if your payback is more than half life of your, the project, it's probably not OK. So if we had a five-year project or a project that had a five-year life in the marketplace, if payback was in year one and two, we'd go, yeah, that's OK. If payback is in year three or four or four and a half, we're going to say, actually, that's probably not such a good project. Shorter paybacks, financially, are seen as better than longer paybacks. However, the issue isn't really about the payback. It's about the risk of the project and many other factors, as we shall see in the next clips.